Alright guys, how's it going? It's Miles from Not Your Cheese TV and this is going to be a video response to 3 River. Um, he's having this contest where you have to make a video response ex or telling your knife story and um, this is going to be my knife story. So, here we go. Alright guys, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just show you one knife at a time. I'm going to try making it as fast as I can because I have about 21 knives and if I talk one minute about each knife, which I could easily talk about 10 minutes on each knife. So I'm just going to go as fast as I can pretty much and just give you the quick story of each knife and what it means to me and how I obtained it or whatever. So the first knife I ever got was, um, I was in Boy Scouts, or Cub Scouts, and I got a Victoria Knox. And this is not actually the one that I got, but, um, this is just recently given to me by my aunt. And, uh, it's really nice because, you know, it's really nice that I have this one, because it reminds me a lot of the one that I had in Boy Scouts. I lost that one, obviously. It has the original box, which is really cool. And it's just, you know, you're playing old Victoria Knox Swiss Army knife. You guys have seen a million of these, so I'm not going to show you it. But, yeah, first knife, like many, is Swiss Army. The next knife that I got was this, um, I'm not sure what how to pronounce the name on it. Yeah, I guess open Oh, I don't know, I'm going to sound stupid. But, yeah, that's what I think it is. And, um, special thing about this blade is I broke the tip off of it when I found it. This is when I was about freshman, so 14 years old. I broke the tip off of it and uh, I reground it on my bench grinder that I got for Christmas that year for making lockpicks and because I was really into lockpicking at the time. So um, I reground the, the tip of it and so I guess that's the first time I ever worked on a knife. Alright, this is a really important blade to me because this is given to me by a good friend of mine, uh, his name is Nick, he's the one who really got me into like making, uh, he introduced me pretty much to the idea of home and function, because I was into tinkering already and messing around and building things, and my dad's an engineer, but he really showed me like how you incorporate the design aspect into it, and I mean we were friends from 8th grade, from 5th grade to 8th grade, so I mean we weren't <laughs> doing like legitimate crazy stuff, but um, He's one. He's the first person I've seen make a stencil. He's one who got me into graffiti. Uh, he showed me how to paint stuff, like paint skateboards and things like that. So I have to give it to him for uh, for pretty much helping me guide my life to the way it is now, making stencils and like that, everything like that. So yeah, here it is. I really like the design of this knife with that finger hole in it too. It's really cool knife. Here's a cool little knife that I got at the gun show, the first and only gun show I've ever been to, and it's really cheap. It was really, the reason I got it though is because of this. Oops. You can see how cheap it is it broke. I'm back and fix it in like two seconds. Next, very important blade to me, one of my dream knives I always wanted I got it for Christmas this year. Um, Kershaw Shallot. Awesome, 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 awesome folding knife. It's one of the most beautiful designs I think ever implemented in a folding knife. Cool, will definitely disagree with me on that, but I don't know. For some reason, this thing just straight gets me going. Here is the M16 by CRKT. This was the cheapest version that they had. The Tanto with the serrations. As you can see, it's neither of those anymore. It's a more of a spear point, drop point style blade. I guess spear point. And it has no serrations. Um, this was given to me by a friend at the time. Um, yeah. We're not friends anymore, so. Whatever. <laughs> she was a bitch. This is actually a really cool blade that I got from Big Five. Um... All these, the knives on from this point on have been within the last two years. So this is a really cool knife that I got um, from Big Five. It was $16. And um, I actually had been saving, I saved up for it. Like, uh, I mean it didn't take that long to save up for it, but I saved up for it. It was uh, like $36 or $40. And then the day that I went to buy it, went in to buy it, it, um, it, uh, 
it was on clearance or discount, whatever. So uh, I got for 16 bucks. So that was an awesome deal. And it's a nice manual folding knife. It's got awesome design. Very nice looking. And yeah, it's it's a nice, pretty big blade, uh, three and a half inch, G10 scales. Uh, pretty decent action. It's pretty smooth. I mean, and uh, lockup is good on it, so it's just a good knife. Really good knife for 16 bucks. You can't you can't beat this for 16 bucks. This is just a fantastic. This was one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. Uh, it was from my very, very, very good friend, Chabon. Um, yeah, he gave me this knife for my birthday, and it was one of the best birthday presents I've ever gotten. Like I said, it's just this, an awesome, awesome thing to have if you, were, if you are from where I'm from, which is California, where these are illegal. Uh, he sells stuff at the flea market, so, I mean, they were selling knives, and he had one of these, so... He gave it to me because he knew that I really appreciated it because I was in the nines and everything. So, this was just a fantastic gift and you guys are going to want to see him play around with it. I'm not super good at it. I used to be decent, but I don't know, I've gotten kind of rusty. Let's see if I can do this old number. Yeah, that doesn't happen that well anymore. There you go. So yeah. This is the leak, Kershaw leak, and this was on um, my wish list pretty much, along with the Kershaw shallot, the bigger brother of the leak, and um, that first one I showed you, I was telling you about how I had to have it, got for Christmas, yeah, so this one, uh, I got it recently, uh, a few months ago, like two months ago, and uh, it's just really nice holding knife. Kind of small, smaller than I thought it was going to be. So I'm glad that I actually ended up getting the Kershaw shallot first because these were both like that and the Kershaw shallot were the two knives I really wanted for a while. At the same time I got that last blade, I got this blade which is a Kershaw RJ1, RJ Martin design by Kershaw. It was spring assist, but as you can see, it's manual now. Because I recently started to grow mo more fond of a manual folding knife. I don't know, the spring assist is just a little too flashy to me and kind of useless. Because, I mean, you can get a blade just out just as fast. You don't really need that spring in there. And it makes closing the blade easier because you don't have that resistance force. So, yeah, that's just a beater knife. I'm actually going to fix it up and probably do some work on it. So, hopefully, we'll see something cool with this knife in the future. The third knife that I got with those last two was this it's a Kershaw OD2. OD I think it's the OD2. Overdrive 2. It has this little flipper on here, which is, a, I guess, called the overdrive mechanism. And it's the only knife I've ever seen with it. Probably the only knife with it, actually. You push on this and flips the knife out, but you'll see that. It actually recesses into the knife back here, so. Getting a camera to focus is literally like one of the most annoying things in the world. If you don't make videos. Just letting you know that. Because this is fucking... Come on, you son of a bitch. Yesterday, I got uh, two knives in the mail. And I just set this one in glue, I guess. So it has some shit on the handles, but... Here it is, it is the Kara Kara 2, um, made by Bird, the Chinese manufacturing sub-company of Spyderco. And it's just a really good knife. This is, um, I always wanted a knife with um, a back lock on it, and I wanted a knife with an opening hole, because I have a knife with neither of those, I don't have any knives with either of those features, so I got that in both of those features in this one knife, plus it's all satin finish, which I really love, fantastic knife, I've been loving every minute of this, even though it's only been about two days, so this knife has just been off the charts in my book. Here's the Kershaw Cryo. This one just came out kind of recently, and it's kind of an anticipated knife. And, uh, I'm going to point out, I have gray paint on my finger now. 
and on my finger, and I didn't paint my nail that I was making a painting and that happened. You probably assumed it, but it's got that really nice finish on it, the um, titanium carbonitride, and it's supposedly supposed to be a really strong finish, so let's see how it wears. I don't really care if a knife gets wear and tear on it, I think it looks kind of cool, but whatever. This is um, a really nice knife, got it two days ago, haven't carried it yet. I ain't mean, got it yesterday. I haven't carried it yet, but it's got a strong action. Here's a fixed blade that I got from a good friend of mine. And um, she gave this to me for Christmas, last Christmas. So, I also got this knife during that Christmas. So, I had two knives that Christmas, which is cool. So, um, here it is. It's the CRKT uh, CK Dragon. Excellent fixed blade. This is my home defense knife. It has a string on it because it hangs from a, from a little wooden post over my bed. And so when I'm sleeping, someone tries creeping up on me. It's, it's good. I catch my faith. Here is just a small little necker knife I got. It's made by Famous Trails. Um, FT Tactical. Same people who make this knife right here. The manual folder I showed you from earlier. And yeah. So, same people make that. Um, yeah, it's just a real simple. There's nothing really special about this one. It's just a simple little neck knife. Here's a Polish AK 47 bayonet. It um, was made in 1958. And I know that because it stands right there. So, um, it's got bake light handles. I refinished the bake light on these actually, just a little bit. You can tell. They're real beat up and really dark brown. I didn't do that great of a job finishing them actually. But, um, I don't really have any plans for this knife, just to own it and just collector's item kind of, even though it's cheap. Because I don't have an AK 47. I was building an AKM, but stopped doing that and now I'm building an AK 74. So, who the hell knows what's gonna happen next? So, because I was building an AKM, I got this AKM bayonet. It's a Romanian. Cheap. It's definitely some, like, quickly manufactured item. Uh, I guess they're just pumping these out. And, um, you can tell because it's not like the, it doesn't have the great, great fit and finish to it. It's just kind of slapped together. It's a solid knife, though. I mean, honestly, it, it feels good. Uh, I mean, it doesn't feel great. It feels like it's built solid, like you're never going to break this or mess it up. It just, I don't know, it's just, the bake light handles make it feel plasticky and, I don't know, it's just nothing special. These are cheap, these are cheap, even for like 15 bucks. Okay, so I'm finished up this video the next day because I just realized that I forgot to film two of my knives. So here are the two that I forgot. Um, here's the last knife that I just made. You guys might have seen this in one of the videos I posted recently. And, um, yeah, it's it just got made out of a scrap piece of steel. You can see I did like a heat anodizing on the blade, um, which totally ruined the properties of the steel. So this is not even a functioning knife. I mean, I could sharpen it. It wouldn't hold an edge for shit. And it is more now just a display piece, I guess. And something I can say. Hey look, this is pretty, so, it is pretty though, so, feels great in the hand. Yeah. So last but not least, this is probably one of my favorite knives, it's definitely my favorite fixed blade knife. It's a USM7 bayonet, it fits my era 15 and it's the same era, so I had to get this because it would match it. And I just love the feel of this blade. It takes a nice edge to it. Uh, it's supposed to be parkerized, but most of the finish kind of wore off. Let's see. So, yeah. um, it's got like this big round kind of handle, but it feels so good in the hand. And this one's fun to flip around too, kind of. The reverse grip on that. Twirl it around. Cause like it has like the, for the band, where the barrel, um, the flash hider goes through. You actually put your finger on that and you can flip it around if you want. So, cool knife. And uh, definitely one of my favorite fixed blades. Always love playing with this.
Alright guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, as you can see, I'm sporting my M7 bayonet on my Colt XM16E1 clone. So, uh, also, three river blades. If I do win this contest, I'm going to want that knife making kit. I want that. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I want the knife making kit. See you guys later.